Alrighty, almost there. Uh, some GCF and grouping questions. So here they are. For the first two or the top two, we just have to factor out the GCF. Now you wanna be very careful that you're reading the question carefully. If the question just asks, what is the GCF? And you factor the whole thing out, it would be wrong. If the question says to factor out the GCF and all you give me is the GCF, that is wrong as well. So if the question says factor out the GCF, well, you need to find the GCF and actually factor it out with parentheses leaving behind what's left behind. So in this case, we first look at the numbers. The smallest number is five, and five goes into 30 and negative five and five. So I'm not even gonna bother with a smaller factor. Five works. Now we look at the variables. All the terms have a Q in common. So we can factor out a Q. The moment we write down our GCF, we open parentheses. How do we know what goes inside parentheses? We divide the term by the GCF. So if we divide 30 QPR by 5Q, the Q will cancel with the Q, the 5 will cancel with the 30 six times. So we're left with 6PR. Then we divide negative 5QP by 5Q. So the 5 will cancel with the 5, the Q will cancel with the Q. So we're left behind with negative P. And then finally, we divide 5Q by 5Q. This cancels to give us one, so plus one. And that's our answer. Now, if we're not sure, or we just wanna be certain on the test, whether we did this correctly or not, all you have to do is just distribute the 5Q back in to see if you go back to the original question. So for the sake of completeness, let's try it. Five times six would be 30. Q times PR would just be QPR. Five times negative one would just be negative five. Q times P would be QP. And then five times one would just be five, then Q by itself, which is exactly what we had there. So I know that I did the question correctly. No mistakes were made. Um, again, if the question just says find the GCF, then 5Q is our answer. If the question says factor out the GCF, then the whole thing is the answer, not just the 5Q, but we need to write down everything that's, that you see on the screen right now. Uh, to this one, the smallest number in this list is 15. So we look for the largest factor of 15, which is 15 itself. 15 goes into 30, yes. 15 goes into 15, yes. But 15 does not go evenly into negative 25. So then we look for the largest factor of 15 after 15, which is five. Five goes into 30, five goes into 15, five goes into negative 25. So as far as the numbers go, five will get factored out. Now, as for the variables, the 25 doesn't even have any variables in it. So it cannot be a GCF. It cannot be a, f a greatest common factor if it doesn't even have a variable. So the GCF is just five. We open parentheses immediately after writing the GCF. And then how do we know what goes inside? We divide the terms by the GCF. So 30 M to the six over five, well, that would just be six M to the six. So that goes here. Then we have 15 M N squared divided by five. Five goes into 15 three times. So then we have 3mn squared. And then finally, we have negative 25 over 5, which is just negative 5. So that goes there. And that's our answer. If you want to be certain, multiply it out, distribute the 5, and you'll get the same thing that we started with, indicating that it's correct. For these last two questions at the bottom of the screen, we have to factor by grouping. Uh, now, hopefully you realize that grouping is a technique only used when we have four terms. In this case, we have four terms each, so it's set up correctly. For grouping, we're basically doing GCF twice. So what is the GCF to these two terms? Um, smallest number is four, but four doesn't go into 21. Next highest factor is two. Two doesn't go into 21 either. And then one, so 
as far as the number goes, all I can do is factor out a one. And then between the letters or the variables, one has an A, the other has a B, so no more variables in common. So really it's just gonna be one times four A squared minus 21 B cubed. If we divide four A squared by one, I'm just gonna get four A squared. If I divide negative 21 B cubed by one, I'm just going to get negative 21 B cubed. So no, nothing really earth shattering happening there. Now between these two terms, uh, the largest or the smallest number is six. So six goes into six, yes, but six does not go into negative 14. So then we try the next largest factor, which is three. Three doesn't go into negative 14 either. Then we try two, eight, two works. So we factor out a two and then we divide six AB by two, which gives us three AB. Now, right at this moment, we can stop and say, this is not going to work because for the second stage of grouping to occur, the stuff that's inside the parentheses has to be identical. So I can factor that out as the GCF. But immediately we see that three AB is not present either here or here. So this approach to grouping is not going to work which means a rearrangement is necessary. So when we do the rearrangement, the second term always goes to the end, which means this problem now becomes 4a squared plus 6ab minus 14ab squared minus 21b cubed. So now between the four and the six, hopefully this is easy enough to where you can say, oh yeah, I have a two as the GCF. And then also we're looking at the variables, uh, they both have an A in them and the smallest power of A is one, so I can factor out an A as well. Immediately after my GCF, I open parentheses. And then how do I know what goes inside? I divide each term by the GCF. So four divided by two is two. A squared divided by A is just A. So I'm left with two A on the inside. And then six AB, divided by two A, two goes into six three times, A's cancel, leaving behind three B. Now for these last two terms, uh, 14 and 21, the largest, uh, the smallest number is 14, the largest factor of that is 14, but 14 doesn't go into 21. So then I try seven, which is the next highest factor of 14, and seven does work. So I can factor out a seven. And between the variables, we see that both terms have a B in them and the smallest power of B is squared. So I factor out a B squared. I open parentheses immediately after my GCF. And then I divide the term by my GCF. So if seven would go into negative 14, negative two times, B squared will cancel with B squared, leaving me with negative two A. Now already I know that this doesn't match, but we're off by just a sign. So what if we had factored out a negative seven B squared instead of the positive? Then this would have been divided by a negative seven. So this would have been a positive and then life is good. Now we divide negative 21 B cubed by negative seven B squared negative seven would go into negative 21 three times, and then b squared would go into b cubed, well, once, and then you're just left with b. So this would be plus three b, and lo and behold, these two guys match, so we can continue with grouping. So we factor out the GCF of this big term and this big term, which is two a plus three b, We open parentheses immediately after writing the GCF, and then we divide the terms by the GCF, just like we've done the, the, this entire time. So 2a times 2a plus 3b over 2a plus 3b, these two things will cancel, leaving behind a 2a. And then here we're going to divide negative 7b squared times 2a plus 3b over 2a plus 3b 2a plus 3b will cancel, leaving behind negative 7b squared. So that would be our answer. 
For the second one, uh, this one has a coefficient of 7. This is just the coefficient of 1, so the GCF would have to be 1 because 1 is the smallest number, and one th there are no other factors of 1 that go into 7. And the 7 doesn't have a y in it, so the GCF really is just 1. And then if we divide 7 by 1, we get 7. If we divide y by 1, we get y. Now for these two terms, we can think a little bit farther ahead. Both of the terms on the inside are positive, and both of the terms here are negative. So the only way we can make the inside positive is if we factor out the negative. So we keep that in mind as we're thinking of our GCF. So the smallest number is 3. 3 goes into 3 and it goes into 21, so that works out perfectly. So we're going to factor out a negative 3 because of what I just said. The insides have to be positive. We look for the variables. They both have an x in them. The smallest power of x is 1, so we factor out an x. Now how do we know what goes inside? We divide each term, so negative 3xy by the GCF, negative 3x. Well, negative 3 cancels with negative 3, x cancels with x, leaving behind y. And then negative 21x divided by th negative 3x. Negative 3 goes into negative 21 seven times. x cancels with x, leaving behind 7. Now, in one of the pre-class prep videos, I did mention that rearrangement is a legal thing to do, as long as the signs go along with the terms. So instead of writing y plus 7, what if we interchange the locations of these terms? So we rewrite this problem as 1 times 7 plus y minus 3x times 7 plus y. y plus 7, 7 plus y, same thing. So we rearrange the y plus 7 into the 7 plus y. And now we see that we have the GCFs again. So 7 plus y is our GCF. We open parentheses. If we divide this term by 7 plus y, we're going to be left with 1. If we divide this term by 7 plus y, we're going to be left with 3x, uh, negative 3x. So that's our answer. Uh, we got one question left. I guess I'll do this one in the same video instead of making a new one for this. So here, Joel and Ellie arrive at this L-shaped safe house and start walking around the building to find a safe way in. So if they start here, uh, it doesn't matter which direction you walk in. Um, let me draw the picture quickly. So the very top is x plus 3, the little side coming down is x plus 1, this we know is x, this we know is x, and this is where they're starting. Okay, so that's a copy of the same picture we see right here. Now to find the distance that they're walking around the house, we need to find the perimeter of the shape. So the distance is always just the sum of the lengths on the outside. Now here we just need to do some stuff that you've done probably since middle school geometry. Uh, look at opposite sides. So if this side is x, this length has to be x as well. So from here to here, this must also be x. If this length is x plus 3, this length also has to be x plus 3. If this length, or I'm sorry, if this length is x plus 1, this length has to be x plus 1 as well. And finally, if this length is x, this length has to be x as well. So to find the perimeter, all we have to do is just add up all the distances on the outside, or the distance traveled. So the perimeter would just be if I start here and then I go. Uh, counterclockwise, so in this direction, I will have x plus 3 plus x, that's these two bottom distances, and then plus another x, that's this distance, plus another x, that's this distance, plus x plus 1, 
which is this distance. Running out of space. Uh, maybe I'll move it to the bottom. Now we have to add this distance, which is x plus 3. And then this distance, which is another x plus 1. And then finally, back to where they started with another x. So here, we just have to combine like terms because we're adding or subtracting. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 x's being added together. So that's just 8 x. And then 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. So the distance that they walked outside the safe house, which is the perimeter of this entire shape, would just be 8x plus 8. And then how big is the safe house? Well, how big is anything is always the area. So now we need to find the area of the shape. So a couple of different ways to think about this and do this. You have to break up the shape or imagine a new shape. A couple of different ways. You can either say, hey, I have a big, big, big rectangle that looks like this. So you can find the area of the big rectangle, which is this whole thing. That's just length times width. So the length here would be this distance, which would be x plus 3, and then this distance would be x. So the length would be x plus 3 plus x. And then the width would be this distance, the whole thing. So this much is x plus 1. This much is x. So the width would be x plus 1 plus x. Now that would give you the area of the large rectangle. From that, if we just want the area of the shaded region, couldn't we take away the area of this small rectangle? And the area of that would be the length, which is x plus 1 times the width, which is x. So if we simplify that, you're going to get the area. The other way to do this, oops, I don't want to do that. is to not break it up like the way we did, or not add something outside. But what if we section this area off? So this is actually a very nice square. The area of a square is length times width, which is, so the area of the small piece would just be x times x, which is x squared. What if we took that and added it to the area of this region, which is also a rectangle, and the dimensions are x plus 3, which is this distance. And then this much is x plus 1. And this much is x. So the total distance here would be 2x plus 1. So the area of this bigger rectangle would be x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. So you can either add the area here and the area here, which was x squared. Or you could take the area of the entire shape. From that, subtract the area of this missing part, which is exactly what's done here. I'll leave it up to you to practice multiplying those two things and either subtracting or adding the x squared and seeing if you get the same answer either way. You should. Uh, yet another way to do this that I think a couple of students did in class was instead of sectioning off it in that fashion, some students in the course sectioned it off here. So then they get this rectangle, where the dimensions are x plus 1, or x plus 3 times x plus 1, because this would be the length, this would be the width. And then multiply that, or I'm sorry, add that to the area of this region. The area of this region would be this dimension 
which is x plus 3 and then x added together, times this dimension, which is x. So really, there's three different ways of finding this at the very least. And there's actually more as well. So you start using triangles and rhomboids, or rhombuses and trapezoids and all sorts of things. But these are probably the easiest and the fastest way to do them. All right, hopefully these sequence of videos helped.